Hi, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome to another Getting Started in Beekeeping. So this is my ongoing series on how to get started in beekeeping, taking a look at the very basics of beekeeping so that if you're just getting started or you're just interested in the potential of becoming a beekeeper, then we're going through all of the basics that might help you understand a little bit about how beekeeping works and help you make a decision as to whether or not you actually want to get involved. If you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe. We've got uh, lots more videos that uh, we've got planned, but also an ever-increasing back catalogue, particularly in the various series that we're currently running. And I hope that uh, those of you that have already subscribed are enjoying the information that uh, we're currently putting out for you. So today we're going to take a look at the Queen and we're going to uh, have a look at how the Queen affects the colony in uh, a variety of different ways, uh, how the Queen uh, is produced and uh, all of the impact that uh, the Queen's characteristics can have on the colony. So here's a picture of the Queen and you can see that she is noticeably different to uh, the workers that surround her and uh, it's interesting that a lot of people do struggle to identify the Queen in their colonies and uh, once you've seen the Queen and you get a feel for the size and shape that the Queen has uh, it becomes a little bit easier. Having said that uh, even I struggle sometimes in a very large colony where you've got lots of bees the Queen can very often uh, duck around a corner and hide and you can spend a lot of time trying to look for her uh, which isn't always necessary but it's uh, it's always nice when you do spot the Queen and uh, confirm that everything is right in that colony. The queen, as you've probably guessed, is female. Uh, they would normally live for maybe three to five years, depending on several factors. And uh, it's the queen that characterizes the colony. So it's her genetic makeup that is passed down into the workers and the drones. And it's those characteristics that uh, we as beekeepers are, are very interested in and are constantly trying to find the right combination of mating between a virgin queen and a drone to get that perfect combination where you have nice calm bees and good foraging ability and a few other factors as well that we'll perhaps touch on uh, later. As we've seen in the photograph, um, she is anatomically different, she looks different and her internal organs are different to those of the other female cast in the colony which is the worker. The queen mates very early in her life uh, and she mates only once and uh, once she's mated she comes back to the colony and for most of the time we'll spend the rest of her life in the colony. Uh, there are one or two uh, other factors that might mean that she'd leave the colony and we'll talk about those later. Uh, but uh, essentially, once she's been out and mated, she'll come back and she'll stay in the hive for the rest of her life. So we're going to go through some of the, the basics of how a queen is produced. We won't get into a huge amount of detail, but just sufficient to give you an understanding of how the whole process works. So if you remember back, if you've seen the earlier video about the different castes within the colony, you'll know that we've got the worker that's female, the queen that's female, and the drone that's male. Both the queen and the worker come from a fertilized egg, and the drone is produced from an unfertilized egg. And the process in terms of the drone is called parthenogenesis, and that's the process by which an unfertilized egg can still mature through into an adult drone. And the male larvae we would term haploid, and the female worker and queen are known as diploid. It's really the point at which the egg becomes the larvae that the workers make that decision to produce either a worker or a queen. And it all revolves around the type of food that they're given. So uh, for the workers, they're given uh, a basic diet of brood food. And then after the first three days, they're then given pollen and honey. But for the queen, uh, she's fed royal jelly uh, from the point at which 
uh, the larvae emerges all the way through to the point at which the cell is capped and it's that that makes the difference and it's a crucial difference between the two and it's the process of the different types of sugars and the amount of sugars and various other factors within the food that both of these castes are fed that determines whether they become a worker or a queen. So again, if we look back to the chart that we put up when we were looking at the different castes within the colony, you can see that quite remarkably, the queen takes the smallest amount of development time compared to the workers and the drones. Whereas the drone takes 24 days to emerge from being an egg all the way through to emergence, the worker takes 21 days, the queen takes just a mere 16 days. And that's quite remarkable when you consider that she's going to become the egg laying machine of the colony, producing thousands upon thousands of honeybees through her lifetime. So as you can see in the chart, there's no difference between the amount of time that the uh, eggs remain as an egg, it's three days, then we start to see a difference in the amount of time that the various casts have when they're open brood, sealed brood, and then emergence. So looking at a comparison between the three. So here we can see the queen marked in blue remains as open brood for just five days compared with six and seven for the worker and drone respectively. And then as sealed brood, she remains sealed for just eight days compared to nine and ten days for the worker and the drone and then finally emerges after 16 days and again uh, comparing that with 21 days for the worker and 24 days for the drone. And one of the major differences in the cell structure between the queen and the worker is that it has to be a much larger cell and if you imagine a frame of honeybee worker cells, there's no easy way to have a queen cell coming out from the cells uh, in the middle of, say, a cluster of worker cells. So what the bees have developed is a long vertical cell that hangs down from the, the frame or hangs down from the comb. And you can see these quite clearly in these pictures that uh, we've got. So after the new Virgin Queen emerges, she'll take some time to mature in the colony and uh, strengthen up her body. She'll initially start to feed herself, but then over a period of a few days, uh, she'll switch to allowing the workers to feed her. Uh, the workers will also groom her and she'll gradually strengthen her muscles, her, her flight muscles, her wings, so that she can go out and mate. And this normally occurs within a couple of weeks of her emerging uh, as a virgin queen. The whole process of going out and mating is uh, fairly complex. She flies from the colony and flies to an area where there are many drones, and we term these drone congregation areas. And here she will mate with as many as 15 to 20 drones. And the more drones that she can mate with, the more successful she is likely to be as a queen in terms of the production of workers. Because if you recall, the workers are produced from a fertilized egg. So if the queen manages to mate with multiple drones, she can store the sperm in her abdomen and thereby fertilize many, many more eggs than if she had only mated with maybe three or four drones. So when the Virgin goes out to fly, we're very hopeful that she's going to be able to find many drones to mate with and come back fully stored with sperm. And the sperm is held in her abdomen in an organ called the sperma theca. And here it's maintained and kept viable for the rest of the Queen's life, which again is quite a remarkable fact. And once the Queen gets into full egg laying production, you will hear that uh, she can lay as many as 2,000 eggs a day. And that, in terms of weight, is more than her body weight. So she has to be fed continuously by the workers and walks across the frames from cell to cell 
uh, depositing an egg into the base of the cell and that's pretty much her lot for the rest of her natural life in that colony. She will, on each day, just continue to lay eggs and that will fluctuate. If you recall the colony size and structure and the amount of brood that a colony has through the year, her egg laying production increases in the spring and through into the summer and then decreases again in the late summer and down in towards the autumn and winter. So she naturally slows down the egg production and then again late winter, early spring, the level of eggs that she's producing skyrockets again and we get a build-up of the colony just ready for that early spring period which is when we're also concerned about swarming. And we talked about swarming in last week's video and it's one of the characteristics that we're trying to prevent uh, in our colony when we produce queens. So in terms of queen rearing we're looking at several different characteristics that are both positive and negative and um, we're trying to achieve the positive characteristics and prevent the negative characteristics. So for instance a positive characteristic might be that the bees are hygienic or that they are strong at foraging and producing honey. Uh, um, main positive characteristic is that the bees are calm. We don't want to have bees that sting a lot. A negative characteristic that we might want to prevent is bees running on the comb. We'd like to have bees that sit quietly on the comb. We'd like also to have bees that don't swarm a lot. So when we're producing queens we have two options. Uh, the natural mating process or an instrumental insemination process. And all of my colonies are naturally mated. So we fill our apiaries with drones that come from colonies that are of the characteristics that we would like to have. And we make sure that lots of drones fly up into the air and hopefully those drones are the ones that are going to mate with the virgin queens. So you can see there's lots of different characteristics that the honeybee queen gives to her colony. And I think we'd probably spend a lifetime trying to achieve that perfect combination. And we'll come on to a session specifically about queen rearing in the not too distant future. Uh, please do hit the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed and don't forget to leave lots of comments down below and hit the like button as well and we'll catch up next week when we'll talk some more about getting started in beekeeping. Thanks for watching.